Hello everybody, me again. Uh, I've had a question from Jack at MSW um, and he actually raises a good point and it's something that I talk about to lots of people, everyone that I've met um, who uses Tekla structures who are having a bit of a conflict, but I always talk about the floor layout tool. Um, if you've never heard of it, then this video is for you and it could save you time on repetitive um, details. So floor layout tool, it came into existence as a very quick way of, of putting in lots of holocore slabs on um, on, a, on a floor or anything or any area, um, and we realised pretty quickly that actually that tool has applications for anything effectively that is arrayed. So anything that's panelised, something like that, can go on there, and you can use that to quickly quickly sort that out. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through two examples of what what structural steelwork detailers um, might want to use that floor layout tool for, um, and hopefully that will generate some comments or questions. Or even if it own, even if it saves you minutes in your day, then this video was worth recording. So let me know um, if it was any any use to you. Um, I always like to get your feedback, but let's let's crack on. So I've got um, a portal frame example model and I've just thrown a mezzanine in and I want to populate the decking. Now ordinarily if you're wanting to do the decking you've got to go to the, the steel library, you've got to load in a deck, um, I don't think I have one, <laughs> um, but you, you'd load in a profile and you have to draw it from point to point um, and then away you go, right, and then you've got to duplicate it and do all your cutouts etc etc. With the floor layout tool this is um, simplified. Okay, so if I bring up the floor layout tool here, I'll, I'll walk you through the component itself. So you can see, let me load the standard, and we've got slabs. Okay, so to draw those in, all I've got to do is draw the perimeter of the of, of the area, and then complete it, and then I get holocore slabs. Okay, and and what you can actually do with this is you can see that we've got some we've got some slabs arrayed here. Um, but what we can actually do is we can add layers to build it up here. So if we want um, like a, a leveling screed or something like that, um, you know, we can call it a screed. So we can put 50 mil, if I can spell, um, we can put a 50 mil layer on it. And it's actually the wrong way up. Um, so let's do it. Let's do it that way up. And we need to move that layer up a bit. So let's move that one to the top. And then we move that one up there. And then if we want to put a top layer on, Let's move that to the top. Let's say, you know, it's a maybe it's a finishing layer, whatever. We can put that on top, right? So you can you can build up the system to suit what you need. And that's what you might use it for if you were doing concrete holocore slabs, right? Because then you can quantify how much of this material you're going to need to pour on it on, on top, all that kind of thing. Um, but for decking, you, you just use the same thing, but you just specify a different profile, right? So as long as it's in your database, you can specify it. Okay, so let me load in the decking, um, and I'm going to be using a rib deck 80 profile here. But effectively, it just needs to be in your database, and then you can specify it in here. Okay, so I've got a single layer because I don't want any built up layers on it. I'm just going to put the decking in, um, and I've gone through and I've taken care to put the name in, reference to the, 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 the profile. Um, I'm also specifying the, the part name, so the part name is going to be deck sheet, and specify the class and finish, and also. Um, the part prefix, which is useful. You'll notice there I put it as PK1. That that will help you to to do packs of decking. Um, so if you draw each pack individually as an area, then you can use the lotting and things like that to, to differentiate differentiate those and order them as packs. Okay, so it just helps with your sequencing. Um, under under general, this default gap width, you'll see that in a minute, but that is effectively an overlap. So with decking, you you, you know it, it sits like this, or it overlaps. What this tool will do is it will line it up to the edges of the profile, but you need to specify that gap to do the offset so that you've got your 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 overlap. But we'll see that in a minute. Um, and then you know this this is these controls are about um, offsets and cuts and things like that. And, and generally speaking, I don't go into these too much. Um, it's more pertinent for the if you're doing concrete to have um, voids and cutouts and access and all that sort of thing. But for decking, there's, there's other ways of, of managing this. Okay, so we've specified that now and let's draw it in. So the first principle with this is that the first two points you pick dictate the span. Okay, 
So if I go from these two, these these pre-created points, if I go from that point to the second point, you'll see that I'm starting to get an indication of the span of the sheet. Okay, if I was picking the two points in the other axis, obviously they'd be spanning in the other direction. But all I've got to do is pick those four those four setting out points and then click middle button and then it arrays my decking. Okay, so that overlap that I was talking about is is that there. Okay, so I've I think it was about 16 and a half millimeters. Um, that's just allowed all of those sheets to offset so that I know that they're going to lap properly. Okay, um, and that's true for all the sheets actually. So if I span across here, you'll see there's a lap there. There's another lap here. Um, once you've got sort of the, the bones of the thing in, you'll notice that you know it, it's penetrating the columns and things like that. Um, and you can take care of that. So let's let's zoom into there. Um, and this is another tool which which not a lot many not a lot of people know about, but it is very useful. Um, it's it's the one that I had highlighted when I started this. It's called hole hole generation. So you can create holes around parts. Okay. So let me show you what that does. So if I activate that, pick the decking and then pick the column. Whoops, that was the wrong part. Let's try that again. Pick the decking, then the column. You can see it's created a cutout around that column. Okay, so by default, it's trying to cut the profile. But if you don't want it to cut the profile, you just want it to cut square. You can change that in here. So let's set that to, to there. And let's say that's 30 mil off and 30 mil off. Um, it's this parameter here. So let's cut square hole. And then you, know, you, can, you can either pre-cut your holes if, if that's what you want to do with your decking, or you can send it to site and just indicate where the holes are. Um, but you know, it's useful. It is very useful. And you can you can use this tool for, for um, cutting holes in lots of lots of things. But particularly useful in this, like with this instance where you've got a column that's continuous and you you need to cut the decking around it. Um, you can use that tool to, to do that quite quickly. Um, in addition to those holes, if you need to introduce a void to this decking, if you click on the component and you've got direct modification on, you'll get these other controls here. So there's, there is a few things you can do with this. One of them is to change the span direction um, of the decking. So if you, if you don't like it, or you, you've, you've accidentally done it wrong, or something's changed, you need to change the direction, you can use these controls in here to change the direction, to modify um, the span of that. You can also use this component here, this tool here, to split the decking. Okay, so if you want to break the sheets along this center line, because at the minute they're one continuous sheet, if you want to break it down that center line, once you've created it, you can activate this tool and then just pick the line that you want to break it on, like that, middle button it, and then that will split those sheets. You can't see it there, but if you look here, that's now cut those sheets along that line, okay. So now, now they're not full bearing, they're, they're, they're single spanning. All right. Um, but the whole the, the thing that I'm building up to here is um, for voids. Okay, so you've got these two controls here, but this one is, is going to be sort of the one you go to, I guess. Um, a new rectangular opening. So I don't have an example sort of void here, but I'll just pick any points just to show you the principle. So if I pick that tool now and then pick two points, representative of the void it's going to cut a hole in that sheet for me okay and then i can do the same thing here i can do the same thing up here okay so a very very quick way to introduce voids into um into your structure it, it is going to cut the full sheet okay i'm just going to mention that to you so you if, if there's a sort of a trimmer here for example you'll need to put a flashing or something like that in manually but the point of this tool is is or the point of the application of this tool for this example is to, to speed up the arraying of, of that decking so that you're not spending time having to do that. You can concentrate on putting those details in. All right. Um, this tool also works very well for cladding. So let me show you an example of, of how we might use that use it for that. So let's go back to the floor layout tool. Um, and this time um, I do, again, I have a, a predefined um, setup for that as well. Um, I'm going to use Optimo, six, uh, Optimo 60s. Here, yeah. uh, K600 range. Um, again, I've set all of that up, um, and you'll see that in the um, under the general for the overlap. Again, I've, I've set that overlap, and we'll look at that again. Um, but principally, I'm just going to OK that, and then I'm going to go into the model and I'm going to start drawing it. So I'm going to just quickly array it over there. So I'm going to pick that corner of the side rail. I'm going to pick that corner of the ease beam. I've got an apex point, and then. 
I'm gonna pick that bit and that point there. And I'm not gonna worry about penetration, so I'm just gonna put that elevation on. Okay, so I've got, you can see I've got cladding sheets there on my elevation. Let's go back to the 3D and let's spin that around. Let's have a look. So it looks like it's facing the right way to me. Um, any cladding aficionados might not agree, but it looks, it looks okay to me. You can see there the overlap, so it slots together. Let me, let me demonstrate how that works. So let's change that to minus, well, let's zero it. Let's zero it, and you'll see what I mean. So those sheets will line up to the edges like that, okay, which is clearly no good for calculating how many, how many sheets you need on your elevation because, you know, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna accumulate and affect the calculation. So you do your overlap to make sure that they're slotted in and that the overlap is, is correct, okay. So we've got that. You can see that the, the sheets are being cut at the top. Um, and we've also got these direct modification controls as well, right? So with the direct modification, if we've made a mistake um, or we want to alter it, we can just grab a point and introduce a new point. Okay, so let me show you with this door here. So let's get rid of that. If I grab that point, that midpoint there, I can drag it up to that corner of the door and then I can grab that next midpoint and bring that back to the edge of that cladding rail there and I can start to sort of trim around that door if you like using these direct modification controls it's like that okay so now i've added a door uh, there is a quicker way to do it but that's a good good example of where direct modification can be useful um, is actually i can use the the same tool that i used to put a void in the decking in the cladding so if i pick that tool now and just draw around this door you can see i get an opening in that door you can use that for for doing window openings in the sheets as well um, I've obviously done vertical laid cladding here. You can use this tool for horizontal cladding. Uh, it just depends which way you pick those two points. That's really um, that's really all I wanted to talk about today in this very short video. Um, let me know what you think. If you've got any comments, leave them for me and I'll pick them up. If you've got any questions, email me. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.